we're going to finish the cooking process with uh, butter. So a good amount of butter in there. We're going to continue to cook it by basting it. Like most chefs, I finish pan roasting my meats with an obscene amount of butter and herbs. Spooning wave after wave of foaming hot butter over the steak for the last minute or so of cooking. The pan should be hot enough to brown the butter, but not so hot that it burns the butter and herbs. A friend recently asked me if basting works, or is it just something chefs do to play with their food? And if it does work, what's the best technique? There's a lot of conflicting information online about whether you should or shouldn't baste. Does it speed cooking or not? Does it keep meat moist and juicy or not? And what about adding more flavor? So today, we're going to put basting to the test and separate fact from fiction. I'm going to try to answer four questions. Does basting speed or slow cooking? Does it cook meat more evenly? Does it keep it juicier? And does it add flavor? The opening of this video shows you how it's usually done. In this case, on the hotline in London's Fallow restaurant. By the way, not only are they a great restaurant, but they have a really good YouTube channel that you should definitely check out. I'll put a link to their original video in the description below. But is basting just a waste of good butter? If you'd asked me a week ago, I would have told you that I believed basting speeds cooking and adds flavor, but that I don't believe that it cooks meat more evenly or keeps it juicier. But after a bunch of testing, I might have to change my religion when it comes to basting. I've been doing my tests by cutting steaks from the same muscle to the same inch and a half thickness and weighing them so I can figure out later whether basting kept them juicier. I use my wireless combustion predictive thermometer with its eight sensors to measure the true core and surface temperatures so that I can time both the cooking speed and whether basting does or doesn't cool the surface of the steaks. I've also been using a temperature controlled induction burner so that I can keep the pan's temperature the same from test to test to make it as fair as possible. I'm cooking at 325 degrees Fahrenheit, which might sound low, but it's actually more than enough for a great crust and avoids too much overcooking and unevenness beneath the steak's surface. Plus, it's a lot less smoky in my kitchen. Don't believe the kitchen bullshit that you need a ripping hot pan to cook a great steak. I'm aiming for a final doneness at the core of 128 degrees Fahrenheit, which is what I consider medium rare. For consistency, I flip both steaks each time the core increases by 10 degrees Fahrenheit. For the steak I'm basting, I'm adding butter to the pan once the steak has two flips to go. This does speed cooking, but not by very much, only about a minute or so across a bunch of tests I've done. This actually surprised me. Because each time I spoon hot oil onto the surface, I'm adding energy to the top of the steak, effectively cooking it from two sides at once. And I'm also preventing heat loss by putting a lid on evaporative cooling. But since you base near the end of cooking, it just turns out it's not much of a time saver. But it does lead to an important difference later, after resting. In my testing, both steaks take about the same amount of total cooking and resting time to reach their peak doneness about 20 minutes for these one and a half inch thick filet steaks. But the core temperature of the steak that was basted increased by a surprising 34 degrees Fahrenheit after resting, while the other steak that wasn't basted only increased by 22 degrees. This is the difference between very rare and medium rare. But otherwise, the evenness of cooking from edge to edge looks about the same. Although basting does make it easier to get some color on the sides and other hard to reach places on the meat. So basting doesn't speed cooking. It just causes more carryover cooking from the extra heat being added at the end, which you could easily adjust for by cooking the steak a bit longer without any basting. And having weighed these steaks both before and after cooking, basting doesn't make a difference. Either way, you lose about 10% of the moisture in the meat so the idea that basting keeps meat juicier is also not true. But I did notice that basting keeps the surface of the meat more than 10 degrees hotter after resting, which is noticeable when you eat it. The entire slice of the basted steak is still pleasantly warm, even with 10 minutes of resting. And by weighing both steaks as they rested, I was able to work out that the basted steak was losing heat from escaping steam more slowly which together with the extra blast of heat from the basting helps explain its warmer surface at the end of resting. 
And what about flavor? In a blind triangle test, where I tried two slices from the same steak and a third slice from the other steak, and then tried to figure out which was which, I could easily tell basted from unbasted, but only when I included some herbs with the basting. I think A and C are the same. B is different. A and C are basted. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, the basted ones are definitely tastier. Even if it's a superficial effect, they're definitely more delicious. But what if I just brushed brown butter flavored with herbs onto an unbasted steak? Can I actually tell the difference between the steak that's been basted as it cooks versus the one that's been anointed with flavored fat as it rests? B and A are the same. C is different. I think B and A are basted. No, C and A were the ones brushed in butter, and then B was basted in the pan. I didn't want that to be true. So is basting worthwhile when you're pan roasting? Well, the answers to my original four questions are no, 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 and no. Basting certainly isn't a bad thing to do, although you could argue you're wasting a lot of butter. But I'm probably going to keep playing with my food, because it is really satisfying to spoon a bunch of foaming hot butter over searing meat. And getting a bit more color on the hard to reach spots of the meat, as well as keeping the surface of the meat warm as it rests, is more than enough of a rationalization for me to keep cooking with an absurd amount of butter. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching.